full agenda tonight, uh, including uh, an executive session later on in the meeting. So uh, when we get to that point, we will be coming back out, but uh, it'll be just to finish up the meeting agenda. I, I anticipate the executive session will be probably about an hour long, so uh, you're more than welcome to stay, okay? But we're gonna try to get most things done uh, before that happens. So with that, uh, Town Clerk uh, Greer, would you please take roll call? Michael Farrar. Present. Frank Senecrovi. Here. Steve Churchill. Here. Ellen Dyson. Here. Caitlin Lanskasky. Here. Thank you. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, liberty, justice, and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. We have some uh, petitioners tonight and a uh, small, short presentation. We're going to start off with our first petitioner, uh, Mr. Chris Brullo. Would you please uh, port him? There's a microphone up there that's on. Would you just state your name and uh, address, please? And then. Uh, so, my name is uh, Chris Polera. Uh, I own a house at 13 McKenzie Drive, and my wife and I, two years ago, bought. 31 Fall Street, which is the old Miners Library, in June of 2020. <coughs> Since that time, there's been four times um, when drainage water from the town has come into my property, exploding up through my toilet in the basement at 31 Fall. You can see that those three pictures there are how we spent our evening on the night of the minor senior prom trying to get uh, my son's girlfriend ready and her friends for pictures down there. Um, it happens when we get heavy rainfall. My only conclusion is that the sewer pipes at Lower Fall Street are too small or that everyone and their brother has their drainage systems into the sewage system which overwhelms the, the, the people down at the other end. I do know that the church basement has been flooded a few times but four times in two years is excessive. The first time I was told that's a once in a lifetime rain, but since that time happened, it's been four times that water has come up from my toilet from the town pipes. Um, we pay a lot in taxes. We also pay sewer fees. And this is not a rhetorical question, but I'm not asking for an answer right now, but uh, what am I paying for my sewer fee if four times a year I've got a deal with this. I've already had to replace the floor one time because water got underneath uh, the, the, the boards. We've changed it to different style of flooring, which has helped, but um, I just find that as a taxpayer, that problem of water coming up through my toilet in the basement, unacceptable. I've had to take the toilet off. I've capped it, but we need to have a bathroom downstairs. So I guess I'm asking for the town if there's any plans to, number one, maybe expand the pipe size down there. I don't, maybe this, not the pipe size, I don't know, but when it rains heavily, water comes up from the toilet and floods the basement. Chris, uh, thank you, and I'm you know, sorry for your pain. I, and I, we've talked on numerous occasions. Uh, I wish this, I was hoping to say that you're the only person who has this problem. Uh, obviously, you're not. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're talking about an antiquated sewer system that's 100 years old and more. Um, the major issue, as is, is I mentioned to you before, is that uh, the sewer system is compromised with storm. Okay? Uh, there are multiple places throughout the town, uh, residences and businesses, that have uh, their stormwater going to the sewer. And Obviously, when you hit a large volume of water, we're on our way tonight, uh, that overcomes the pipe. And unfortunately, where you are is kind of like the pinch point of life for the sewer system. Everything goes there, uh, behind Fall Street, uh, underneath the bridge, 
behind you and so forth and then to the waste treatment plant okay as far as a plan um, I wish I could say we're ready to spend 50 to 60 million dollars to fix the problem uh, I wish I could tell you that we're going to pass a local law that says uh, our sewer department water and sewer department will have to inspect everybody's property and if you don't cooperate you're going to be fine uh, I wish I could tell you that you know we had the money to fix everybody's own problem uh, I know at my house I have a similar situation twelve to fifteen thousand dollars to fix the problem and there's many homeowners that obviously are not in that position uh, I was working with our uh, former engineer Peter Baker uh, Lisa Perez is here tonight and we'll be carrying the ball and we're trying to come up with a short-term fix for yourself in particular uh, I know you don't want to hear this kingdom the kingdom road pump station sewer line that we're hoping to be putting a shovel on the ground this fall will help alleviate the situation because it's going to take less or it'll take more of the sewage from that line and move it over type of thing uh, which I think will help at some degree and I know that's not you know going to help you tonight I understand it um, we're working on it I will be meeting with Lisa uh, and Joe Tulo and we're going to try to come up with something uh, when it gets really bad uh, we have the, the water department sewer department has pumped out the manhole behind the old filthy capacities uh, every time we do that, that's a violation to the DEC that Mr. Tulo has to report. Uh, but we'll continue to do that uh, in the severe storms to help relieve the pressure from that pipe. Okay? Um, I don't know if it's a quick fix to enlarge in that pipe, but uh, I don't know if people realize it or not, but that sewer line is, goes right through Van Cleef Lake. Okay? You can't see it, but it's in Van Cleef Lake, and it goes to our waste treatment power plant. So we're talking about a very difficult situation. And I, again, apologize, and I know that doesn't help your calls at all, but I'll continue and we'll continue. The board will work on it. Okay? Thank you for your time. Sure. Thank you. Okay, our next petitioner is uh, Noah Welker. Mr. Walker, welcome. Welcome, thank you. Same, uh, same situation, Mr. Walker, just state your name, your address, and please use the microphone. Uh, I'm Noah Welker. I'm joining you guys tonight for uh, 27 Cayuga Street, uh, above the drop-in center in Seneca Falls. Um, we are opening, currently open. Uh, we haven't had a grand opening event yet, but we are offering services. Uh, Connections Rounded Recovery. It's a community outreach center for folks in recovery. Um, fully staffed by recovery peer advocates, so folks who have lived experience in recovery. Um, what you can expect there is individual services for individuals and their family and uh, peer-led groups. Uh, we're looking at, we've got a couple of uh, mutual support groups, AA, Al-Anon, um, that kind of thing uh, currently happening. Um, we're looking to expand on that. There are opportunities for folks who are interested that want to volunteer um, to pick up some hours. Uh, we're just looking for uh, folks to be role models for the, for the individuals that we serve. Um, I wanted to highlight uh, that we are offering services for uh, affected family members. Um, we work with an outreach team, our, our Cody Team Center of Treatment Innovation. Um, they have positions specifically for working with affected family members. Um, you can find us on uh, Facebook at Connections Around Recovery. And uh, I just wrote on here that we're, we engage individuals at any and every point in the recovery and we walk forward with them from that moment. Um, there's a, a huge need. Uh, you see it on the news every day. Uh, the problem's not going away. So this is a little bit of that outside of the box thinking to try to meet people where they're at and walk with them in recovery. That's all I got for you guys. Mr. Walker, will this uh, be a, a 
a referral type of thing or a walk not a walk-in type it's, of thing? It's open to the public. To the public. Uh, no admission criteria. Um, we certainly ask that you know no no drugs or alcohol weapons are brought onto the uh, premises, but we really do want to meet people where they're at and help them get to the next thing. So uh, engaging people, getting them to detox, connecting them with outpatient mental health services, um, that's our bread and butter. Great. So do you build their insurance? Do you build the, the consumer? Uh, so this is a grant run program. Um, we do a little bit of data collection through surveys, but uh, we, we are a free service, so to speak. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. Uh, our next uh, is not a petitioner, it's actually a pre presenter. Uh, uh, Joe Clarko and his uh, colleague Bill are here tonight to talk about insurance uh, for our retiree group. Uh, when we changed brokers a uh, few years or a few months back, uh, Mr. Clarko, myself, and Sarah uh, continue to meet and uh, trying to work on how we can better serve our customers, our employees, and our retirees, as well as uh, trying to save the taxpayers as much money as we possibly can. Um, before they get started, just a little background. We have uh, 32 retirees uh, that are getting uh, health insurance benefits in retirement. It's costing the town about $120,000 a year just for that group of 32 people, okay? So we sat down uh, with Joe and Bill, and uh, what can we do, okay? Uh, let's start brainstorming, et cetera, et cetera. So they have a plan, and uh, I wanna emphasize before they share some ideas with you, uh, because I know when our retirees uh, hear about this, a panic's gonna go through. Uh, we're not attempting to cut any services, okay? Uh, each one of our retirees, uh, we respect, and we're not cutting their services. They'll get the same services they're getting. It will not cost them any more money out of their pocket, okay? So it'll kind of be like a status quo, but we're going from, as these folks will explain it to you, more to a uh, individualized uh, medical Medicare Advantage program, something that unfortunately I'm at, Okay, and I say unfortunately because I'm 65, uh, so when they, you reach that magic number, you go to something of that nature and you go into the market and you start uh, choosing what's applicable for you and your family at that point. Okay, okay? so I hope I didn't uh, mess anything up. It'll be a resolution, board members in your packet, uh, later on in the meeting uh, to uh, move forward with this program. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Joe Clark. I appreciate being here. I've got my partner, Bill Chamberlain. Um, before I turn over to Bill on the Medicare part, I just wanted to say it's an honor to uh, represent the town and be your broker. Uh, Sarah has done an amazing job, and through Sarah's efforts, and I, this did not go unrecognized, and through Mike, uh, we have been able to find a few people that you were actually paying previously, both on the health insurance and on the Medicare, so you were paying double. Uh, we were able to secure some credits back to the town. We're working on getting some additional, but it's in, it's in several thousand dollars or more that's going to come back because through Sarah uh, effort and just kind of doing the audit, found out that you were paying double. So these are things that we're trying to do is just make sure that you have the right coverage. As Mike said, the goal is not to have anyone lose any coverage, go backwards, but to also be able to save um, money for both the town and for the retirees. Uh, going forward. So I'm going to hand some packets out, but I'll turn over to Bill on the Medicare. Um, this is Mr. Bill Chamberlain. Okay, so three things we look at when we started looking at this program. One was to streamline the benefit offering to the retirees. Secondly, offer as good or better coverage than they currently have. And then thirdly, reduce the cost to both the town and potentially the retirees. Um, the demographic currently, and we're talking about just the retirees that are age 65 and over, uh, the current demographic for the town is there are nine enrollees on a group Medicare supplement plan that is coupled with a group prescription drug plan. Whenever you have a Medicare supplement, 
that does not cover Part D, which is your prescription drugs. So you have to wrap a, a prescription drug plan around that. Um, as it says there, the medical portion of it provides coverage to pay whatever Medicare doesn't pay, and the prescription drug plan has a zero deductible with some co-pays uh, for your drugs. Um, those co-pays are the only out-of-pocket expense that those retirees that are on this um, group um, Medicare supplement plan, that's the only out-of-pocket expense they currently have. Nothing wrong with that. That was an original approach to a group plan through Excellus or any other companies that we represent. Then later on, Medicare Advantage came into play. Medicare Advantage takes Part A, which is hospital, Part B, which is everything else but prescription drugs, and D, which is prescription drugs, and wraps it all up into one policy. So there are retirees currently, there are 13 of them that are on what's called a group Medicare Advantage plan. So this plan has co-pays for most items that they're going to use the insurance for. They go to the doctors, they pay a $15 copay. Um, lab work's covered in full, so on and so forth. But there's co-pays for most <coughs> items. There's also co-pays for the prescription drugs that mirror the prescription drug plan that the former retirees, the other nine, have. So when we look at this, um, what our proposal was after looking at it was one option would be to put all the retirees on individual Medicare Advantage plans and make them whole uh, by using what's called a health reimbursement account, which will give them the opportunity to get reimbursed for any expenses that they have. Um, so the new plan would have an out-of-pocket maximum of $7,200. Uh, that sounds like a lot, but again, we're going to give them, you'll see in a second when you look at the, the spreadsheet, uh, we're going to give them the ability to get those, that, those costs reimbursed to them if they choose. So if you go to the second page, there's a spreadsheet with a whole bunch of numbers. And what you see there is the current plan and the current costs. So you have... 13 people at 419.23 a month, and you have nine people at a combined cost of the 213.85 and the 225.77. The plan we're proposing is $39 a month. So you can see, instead of giving all that money to the insurance company, we're keeping it here, and then we're going to reimburse the retirees um, on an as needed basis so that they're whole, they don't have any more out of pocket expense, and probably less than they currently have. Um, but as you can see, currently the annual cost to the current plan is $112,878.84. Uh, the current premium cost for the plan we're proposing for the entire year would be $10,296. So you can see there's a tremendous savings there. Now, if everyone used all the money we're going to make available to them through this health reimbursement account, the town would pay out $114,200. You'd throw me out of here and probably never see me again, or I'd never see you again. Um, what's projected, and you'll see in your packet what the co-pays are, but what's projected is that the town would reimburse, I'm projecting 50% of that number. Now, I'll tell you why I'm projecting 50% of that number. I believe it's going to come in much lower than that. The other accounts that I have set up that are similar to this actually reimburse at about a 30 to 35% rate. I'd rather show you 50% and have it come in at 30 to 35 because that gives us a nice cushion and, and we're all happy. If I tell you it's going to be 50% and it comes back at 51%, you say, oh man, they're like all the rest of those insurance guys. <coughs> so what we do is we project very conservatively so that we have a nice cushion. My expectation is you're going to have a surplus next year. And uh, so with the projection of 50%, which is conservative, as you can see, the total cost of the plan would be reduced to $67,396 instead of the almost $113,000 you're spending now. 
Currently, the, the retiree contribution towards this is about $20,000 a year. Uh, that's kind of a moving target right now because, again, there's, there's some research that's being done on what the retirees are paying, and so I use the, the round number of 20000 because that's about where it's going to come out. Um, so you can see the net cost of the town and the savings is $45,482.84. Or so. <laughs> okay, if you go to the next page, you'll see that everything we're talking about here, we're going to talk about an Excellus plan because there's no reason to move them away from Excellus. Uh, this, this plan we're talking about uh, that we would be providing is a five star plan, which is the highest rating that, not to, that the CMS, the Center for Medicare Services, gives to an insurance company for the plan and for how it works and for how they pay their claims. So I'm not giving you a big brief uh, summary of benefits here or anything, but I wanted you to get an idea of some of the co-pays because they're very minimal. Um, we have several clients with plans like this and I've never had anyone reach that $7,200 out of pocket maximum. You can see that if they go to the doctors, <coughs> excuse me, it's a $10 copay. Uh, specialist is a $45 copay. These are all copays that if they want to have them reimbursed, this health reimbursement account will be available for them to uh, uh, get reimbursed. Um, the largest copay is inpatient hospital care. It's $360 a day for the first five days. So if someone ends up in the hospital, it would be an $1,800 reimbursement. But that's your largest copay. Um, any questions so far? Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me turn this thing in. So we're talking like uh, I, I calculated divide 114,000 by 32, and I came out with about 3,600. So you're figuring the average person is going to use about 1,800 a year. Right. It's actually the number is 22, not 32. I think the other 10 must be under 65 retirees. Correct. Oh, and so, we, oh, so, so it's 22. Yeah, so that's 20. We have retirees who are not 65. <coughs> so. <coughs> so that's why that number is 22. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, you should always check my math even more. I <laughs> no, use. No, even, I, because number one, I'm an insurance guy. And number uh, so if we move forward, if the board approves uh, the resolution, um, as we talk, the game plan would be to try to get all of our retirees, uh, Medicare eligible retirees, uh, in a meeting in the same room. Uh, and we're going to be trying to do this before September 1, correct? Yes. Now, I've already spoken to you of one retiree who was eligible June 1st. Um, and I, he's still working. He's on the group plan, so I said stay there for now. And once the dust settles, we'll figure out what we're going to do. Um, the last thing you'll see in there, and I, I'm done in two seconds. There's a, there's also a information in there on Epic. We will make sure that all the retirees are signed up for Epic, which is the New York State uh, pharmaceutical program that alleviates any issues they might have with the donut hole, and I'm not going to go into what that is, but it, fi it, it actually makes it a better prescription drug plan than what they currently have. It's additional coverage <clears throat> in case you're the current insurance or the insurance that we're going to sign up and doesn't cover everybody. Another thing, another question. Um, so this is probably more for Mike and Sarah. So I'm a retiree from the town. I uh, go uh, to the doctor, specialist, $40. I submit that bill back to the town, then the town writes the employee a check? That's yeah, we all be done through a third party administrator. But yes. Oh. Who's going to hold our money then? A third party? So you don't, nobody holds your money. What happens is once a month, this third party administrator is going to see what claims they paid from the town, someone like yourself who submitted a receipt. <coughs> Excuse me. They've already sent you the check. They just bill the town. We have all of our regular employees 
have the same type of a setup with an HRA already. And so when you meet with each employee, you, you'll go over this, give them, a, you know, how it's going to work so they don't... Absolutely. We're hoping to have a group meeting. That's why we're trying to do September 1st to catch everybody before they head south for those that do. And then if whoever can't make it, if they're out of town or they're there, then uh, these folks will reach out and make an appointment to meet them one on one. Yeah, do the Zoom meeting. Very good. Well, thanks for saving okay. us this Okay. Any, any other questions for Bill? Uh, my contact information is, is at the bottom of the first page, so feel free to call me directly if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you. Bill, thank much. you. Thank you. Joe, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thanks. Do we have any uh, petitioners to go for? Yeah. Mr. Babbitt. Yes, sir. Dan Babbitt, Seneca Falls. Lifetime residence in second grade. Can you hear me now? I guess you're not lifetime now, huh? <laughs> My lifetime, I thought it was. It's close enough. Got out of Auburn. Didn't mean to do second grade twice. The western boundary of the town of Seneca Falls extends to approximately Bower Road. Then it becomes the town of Waterloo. I believe that's the town of that village. Not even close. No? Yeah. Goes further than that? Got the western boundary. The western boundary of Seneca Falls. Well, which would be the eastern boundary of Waterloo, right? Yes. Well, when you get in, when you're on 414, which is west of Bower Road, you're still in Seneca Falls, right? If I'm at Bannadet, I'm still in Seneca Falls. If I'm at Bill Cranham, I'm still in Seneca Falls, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. I guess I should have been more specific. Thank you. However, the Waterloo School Tax District starts at the old village of Seneca Falls line on the west side of the defunct Seneca Machine Shop. I'm not sure what's there now, but I think... Party house. <coughs> Party supplies. Okay. At one time, this land was mainly farmland, uh, everything west of there. Therefore, it was minimally taxed and was given to Waterloo for school taxes. Their schools needed it, as I understand that. As we all now know, that is no longer the case, as there, there has been substantial development in this area with thriving businesses and a landfill. All those taxes from that area is a uh, Waterloo school tax. I forget the term, district. So they get the money. Lots of businesses, since Waterloo no longer needs this money, I'm assuming, and this is Seneca Falls domain, it's time for us to take back this district for our own benefit. Does anyone think Seneca Falls has too much money? Sure. Should this should this be a petition for the Seneca Falls school dis, school district? I'm not sure. I'm not sure who would initiate this. It wouldn't be the town of Seneca Falls because all of those people, like Waterloo Container, pays town of Seneca Falls taxes. They pay Waterloo school tax, but they pay town of Seneca Falls. So mm -hmm. you might want to bring this up to Seneca Falls school district and see if they'll go up to Waterloo and say, "Hey, you want to give all that property back so we can put it on our tax rolls?" Yeah. Okay. Let me know when you're going to do that, because I'd like to be at that meeting. Okay, one of my suggestions that, let me get this little snippet in here. Uh, I believe Waterloo had a very large surplus. I feel Waterloo's had enough, and it's time to wind this down. And this is what I'm going to propose, that I would propose to the uh, Board of Education. I realize both we and they have to agree on this process, so I'm suggesting they do this gradually say 50% the first year, 25%, et cetera, et cetera. As long as this situation comes to an end. Uh, I feel this just makes sense as this area should become our domain again. Thank you. Just to give you a little history lesson, Mr. Babbitt. Uh, so uh, Arthur L. Baker, who ironically is related, is uh, Peter Baker's great, great uncle, I think. Grandfather. 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 Thank you. Great grandfather? Great just grand, just grand grandfather. Okay. So Mr. Baker was superintendent of schools in Seneca Falls. Uh, as you said, all that territory property was farmland. And Mr. Baker and the school board decided that it was too costly to transport those students 
in town of Seneca Falls buses. So they basically uh, work, worked out an arrangement with Waterloo School District. And I don't know what the arrangement was, but uh, that's how it all played out. And then obviously uh, it became a very developed area. Uh, you're 100% right. It's a, uh, the Seneca Falls School District loses a lot of tax revenue from that very commercialized uh, area. <coughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? All right. Uh, I have a motion to approve the regular monthly meeting minutes of May 3rd. I make the motion. Second, please. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. And motion to approve the bid opening of Veterans Bridge Repairs on May 17, 2022. I'll make the motion. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 There is a resolution uh, tonight uh, in your packet to uh, move forward with this uh, this low bid. And uh, I have a motion uh, to approve the minutes of the special meeting on May 23rd, 2022. So moved. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, we have three communications in our uh, board packet. One is the minutes of the Heritage Preservation Commission meeting. One is the minutes of the Planning Board meeting, uh, April 27th. And the third communication is the minutes of the Seneca County Planning Board meeting of May 12th. Old business. Uh, sale of surplus property. I am very happy and ecstatic. <laughs> to say this will never be on the old business agenda again. Pat, you want to make any... Uh... You can take 115 off the agenda. That uh, the closing happened on the 23rd of last month. Um, uh, I'm hoping that the town clerk will have some checks for me. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I Thank you for tonight. Request yes. it so I can contribute to the expenses of the closing, but otherwise that has uh, that has happened. And uh, as far as I understand, the uh, the buyers are happy to be property owners here in the town of You know I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> and then 60 State Street will be next. Um, we have had some. I've had to uh, get in touch with the surveyors for that property, and uh, I'm waiting for some more information from them. Once that happens. Uh, I'll be able to uh, deliver all the closing documents to the buyer's attorney and they can get their, their title work and everything uh, squared away and we should be able to close that one uh, prior to the next meeting. Thank you, sir. Uh, just a side note, uh, you know, 10 Fall Street has been uh, an ongoing uh, liability for the town. Uh, it was a place of the former town, uh, town offices and then there was a fire. Uh, we continue to work uh, through the Seneca Falls Development Corporation and myself uh, to line up uh, developers and uh, to develop the property. Uh, mostly everybody we talk to would like to develop the whole area, uh, which includes Two Falls Street, which is the former hospital. Uh, and we don't own that, obviously. So uh, that's been the hiccup in the road. Uh, that the, the people who own the property, the, the Muse, uh, haven't been very cooperative in the price they want for it. So, but we continue to work with developers. Um, I had a couple developers look at a piece of property that a lot of people don't even know we probably own, but uh, behind the Little League Fields, uh, there's a stretch of land. If you've been around in the old days, it was the old racetrack. Uh, Sheila, you probably remember that. Um, so I have a developer looking at that as well, and uh, who knows, hopefully something positive can happen. Uh, it would not be a big <clears throat> item to bring sewer and water to that district, or to that area. We're not that far away from it. Uh, so uh, we'll continue to do that as much as we can. Uh, but the goal is to get as much property owned by the town back on the tax rolls. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, everyone received their monthly reports from our distinguished department uh, chair people. Uh, any board members have any questions on any of those reports? Okay, so must be doing a good job. Okay. We'll go to new business. 
about B and C? What about B? What about B? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Don't mind me. B and C. So, uh, yeah. So, geez, boy, you really jumped the gun there. Uh, we're back to the water fountain uh, that we was given to us last year by the Canal Corporation. Uh, we looked at uh, permanently wiring the, uh, the fountain, and uh, it did not make the budget from 2022. And then we agreed that we we're going to go out and try to get donations. Uh, uh, we went to uh, Ghoul's Pumps, and uh, they are not in a position at this moment, uh, so they were not interested. Uh, the pump was manufactured there. Uh, we're still working on it, but I, I'm pretty sure that in 2022, there will not be a fountain in the water, okay? Um, and we'll bring it up in a budgetary uh, process next year, or this, this fall. If not, then we'll have to go to Plan B, okay? Uh, also, in your packet, uh, I was uh, charged with uh, getting an idea or proposal for professional service to work on a comprehensive plan. Um, I included the comprehensive plan uh, uh, from MRB, and uh, you can see the numbers there if you've had a chance to look at that. Uh, I guess what I'm going to ask you to do between now and July is to look at the plan and think about moving forward uh, and starting the comprehensive plan uh, as soon as possible. Did we put out an RFP for that? I did not. So we're just going to throw it to MRB? Correct. $50,000? Correct. I put out, I, I, when I reached out to uh, Genesee or Greater Rochester, uh, whatever they call themselves. Huh? Rochester, we're fairly Valley. Pardon? Genesee Valley Planning Council. Yep, that. And I've asked, uh, I've talked to my contact and two contacts, Betty, uh, and just asked them for a ballpark idea a couple months ago, and they didn't even have the common courtesy to give me a ballpark idea uh, saying that. So I did not put it out in RFP, and I'm not going to put it on RFP. If you want to put an RFP up, be my guest, okay? But I'm not going to, it's a professional service, it's not required by law, and, uh, but be my guest if you want to do that. That's accurate. That's Copacetic? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Copacetic, sure. It is a professional service, you're not buying, this is not buying gravel, you're asking a professional right. to, to, to come in, exercise their judgment, do their job. Um, we may be able to save some money if we solicit it some other and there, there might be some opportunities to even save more money, and that's why uh, I'd like to take a look at it in between now and July, and also there might be some things that change between now and July that would also redefine uh, the need for MRB to be the consultant. Uh, so we'll, we, we can talk about that at some point, but uh, you know, this is the ball, this is the idea of it. I think MRB has the most familiar, familiarity with the town of Seneca Falls than any other professional group that we could possibly bring in. And I think that goes a long way to that. But no decisions made tonight. Uh, you're more than welcome to put an RFP out if you'd like, be my guest. And uh, we can wait on that. And then as I said, there'd be some things might be coming up here in the near future that, uh, you know, we still have the town manager uh, out there type of thing. and. Maybe, who knows, we get a town manager that might be in a position to help facilitate a comprehensive plan. And we wouldn't need the full scope of MRB uh, to be the facilitator. It might be an abbreviated version of what their role would be. So you're not saying that you want us to come back in July and approve or disapprove this proposal? Correct. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. All right, uh, I have a motion to approve the, uh, I'm going to just group them all together, these, everyone in chat knows uh, the special events uh, provided to you by uh, Missy. Uh, I have a motion to approve the I'll special events. I second. Thank you. Any discussion? Second. Are there any questions for Missy? I'll make a motion. No. No questions? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. There was a late edition, uh, <coughs> anybody get the late edition? I think Missy sent it out by email. Yeah, uh, I Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, 
I have a motion here. I hereby make a motion to regretfully, regretfully accept the retirement of Linda Wolkout from the position of police clerk dispatcher with the town of Village of Seneca Falls, effective July 9th, 2022. Uh, Chief Pincher would like to thank Clerk Wolkout for her dedication, compassion, and professionalism to the department, citizens, and those that visited Seneca Falls for the last 35 years. Chief Pistra and the members of Seneca Falls Police Department wish nothing but the best for Linda in her future endeavors and a happy and healthier retirement. I have a second. Motion, please. I make the motion. Thank you. And a second. Second. Uh, I will uh, uh, obviously vote in favor of this with regrets and uh, would like to obviously thank Linda for her years of service. I think we're going to do a little something next month, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 I have a resolution here. Whereas, effective July 9th, 2022, Linda Wolcott will retire as police clerk dispatcher after 35 years with the town. Whereas, the Seneca Falls Police Department has been actively recruiting, interviewing, and conducting background investigations for the vacant police clerk position. Uh, to properly train a new clerk prior to Clerk Wilcox's departure, whereas upon a completion of the clerk hiring process, it is the recommendation of the Police Chief, Public Safety Committee, and Personnel Committee to backfill this position with Charlotte McChuka. Not bad. That's good. Go ahead. You can. Uh, you want to? I'm. I'm sorry. Uh, Charlotte, right? That's fine. Okay. Uh, to backfill this position with Charlotte. Therefore, be it resolved that the town board accept backfilling the vacant full-time police clerk position at the rate of $19.50 an hour. Can I have a motion for that, please? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Second? Second. Any questions or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Welcome. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you, sir. And hopefully somebody can stand up here 35 years from now and read off your retirement in 35 years. Sorry, I have a motion here. I hereby make a motion to regret this resignation of Joseph S. Schaefer from the position of police officer with the Seneca Falls Police Department effective May 24, 2022. Uh, Chief Pinchner would like to thank Officer Schaefer for his dedication, compassion, and professionalism to the department, citizens, and those that visited Seneca Falls. Uh, Chief Pinstra and the Seneca Falls Police Department members wish nothing but the best for Joe in his future endeavors. Can I have a motion for that, please? I make the motion. Thank you. Second? I'll second. Thank you. And again, I will vote yes for this, but with regrets. Uh, Joe's uh, was a fine officer. I had Joe as a student back in Waterloo. Uh, and uh, it's not that Joe is moving on to another police department or law enforcement. Uh, he's in the, doing a career change at the moment. So. Uh, all in favor of this resignation, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. I know. I want to make sure I got it. Uh, I'd like to. I will make the motion. Uh, proposed wall removal and replacement. Jack Hammond removed damage seven foot of the south wall and. Seven to eight feet of the south and west wall, trucking of debris, frame and rebar necessary. Estimated cost will be eight thousand. Uh, we need to I'll make a second. motion to approve that. Second. I'll second it. Thank you. Any questions here? This comes out of a cemetery fund that we had budgeted for. All in favor, please say aye. 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 I have a resolution here. Uh, Agenda Highway Resolution, whereas the Highway Department is seeking to purchase a 2024 HV 507 SFA International six-wheel dump truck with plow equipment from Viking Pursuant, Danadega County, contract number 8996, uh, whereas the dump truck and the plow equipment will be purchased from Regional International Corp uh, for Pursuant to a quote <coughs> received amount of $206,000. Uh, whereas the highway department will use this truck for plowing highways and road maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas the town of Seneca Falls Town Board finds that Onondaga County is a governmental entity, whereas the contract awarded under Onondaga bid number 8996 has been made available for use by other government entities, whereas that contract was let in a manner consistent with New York State. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Seneca Falls Town Board hereby authorizes the purchase of a 2024 HV 507 
from International 6 wheel dump truck with plow equipment from Viking for the amount of 206,000 pursuant to General Municipal Law 10316. I make uh, a motion. We, uh, motion and a second, please. I will second it then. Uh, Jim, a very impressive uh, resolution. I'm going to start having you uh, prepare that. Thank you, Thank you. <laughs> Very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any questions for uh, any questions for Jim and for the board? Any board members for uh, Frank and myself on the committee? Uh, any questions about this? Uh, I, I think it's important. You, you, you kind of skipped over the one part. It's important to let the public know that this is currently not budgeted for this year. But the reason that uh, it's being ordered this year is it takes it, the the wait time is currently two years on delivery. So it, it was planned to be purchased in 2024. It needs to be ordered today. So good point. Thank you. And. Uh, by doing it now, we can lock into the price of 206000 versus waiting, you know, for the budget season to start in next year. Any question? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody aye. opposed? Thank you. Uh, resolution to approve repair work on Veterans Bridge, where the Veterans Bridge needs expansion, joint repair work. I that we uh, approve the... Uh, bid on uh, fixing the Veterans Bridge expansion joint. A second for that, please? Second. Thank you. Any questions? Again, this was the bid opening uh, in back in May 17th, uh, conducted by Barton Judas as far as the uh, proposal work put out, and it's for $122,750. Uh, we are, for the most part, budgeted for that. Uh, we're short. You remember, Sarah? I don't know, we're short about 12,000, I think, uh, that in when the work is completed, I'll have a resolution to move some money uh, out of contingency into this, the highway department to pay out that. But we've been saving up for these repairs, uh, so we're a little short. Okay, any questions? Any further? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. Resolution approved health insurance changes for the town of Seneca Falls retirees, whereas the town of Seneca Falls currently has 22 retired employees and the current cost of health insurance premium to the town is $112,000 and change, uh, whereas the Finlay Group LLC has proposed changes that would put all retirees in individual Medicare Advantage plans, uh, whereas the projected savings for the town would be 45, again projected, no retirees insurance coverage or current out-of-pocket expenses would be compromised. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Senate Falls Town Board approves the Finger Lakes Group LLC to begin meeting with retirees to start the process of switching health plans. Have a motion for that, please. I'll make a motion. Second? Second. Any questions? You know, I would like to, you know, we'll probably lose sight of this, but it would be uh, wonderful if we got a report on it a year after it's implemented to see what we indeed did say uh, okay. and whether it did impact anybody because. You know, we say that it's not current, second, and impact on these current out-of-pocket expenses, but that's not true if, it, if their out-of-pocket expenses exceed $7,200, you know. Sure. So there's, but it would be great to have a report. Sir, can you uh, put that in your little notebook and, because uh, you'll have that data more than anybody else and see exactly what we've paid out. Yeah, I made a note. I'll try to try Thank you. To Thank you. Report. Any further questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. I have a resolution here to approve the town supervisor <coughs> to solicit RFPs for design and construction management of the DRI public works projects, whereas the town of Seneca Falls received a downtown revitalization initiative grant from the state of New York in 2019, whereas there are three public works projects included in the grant, community center, skate park, the visitor center, and Northside Canal restoration whereas construction, design, and management are needed to complete these projects. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Senate Falls Town Board approves the town supervisor to solicit requests for proposals from interested companies to complete these projects. We have a motion? Make a motion. Second? Second. Thank you. I got a discussion. Yeah. yeah. Just a question. Uh, so you, you talked about three projects in the resolution, right? We got about 10 million, right? No. 
Oh, we didn't get 10 million? Okay. The, the whole Nine DRI grant was worth 10, 10 million. million. Yeah, I just Not wondered specific. how much, no, how much were those three out of the three? Uh, don't quote me, but the community center is about 330,000, the visitor center is about 500 and, yeah. yeah. And then okay. the north side canal is about 3.6 million. Oh, so it's just a little over a million, so we got a lot of money left. The DRI is all done. Over yeah, no, but I mean the projects. There's still like $8.9 million worth of projects to go. No, no, no. All that money's been allocated to yeah. other things. And they've all finished? They're all they done? They didn't start. Nothing has started but That's yet. what I'm saying. But this is we, only the beginning. Only the beginning for the, our responsibility in the DRI grant is just for the public works projects, okay? Uh, there was money for... Uh, for building improvements, okay, that that's already been that that's already been decided by the uh, the uh, hang on for a second. The Seneca, OPC. Seneca Falls Development Corporation handled that, okay. The Italian restaurant that we're selling is 60 State Street, right. okay. That comes under another domain, not ours. Oh. We're not responsible for that. They go through the state for that. So, so we won't have to pass a resolution. No, okay. this is the only resolution all right. That's that all we right. have to do, okay. you know, have construction design in. Oh, okay. So I will put this out if it's approved and we need to start getting going. The clock is ticking. Yeah. And the clock is a five year clock. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, the only reason I ask, Mike, is, you know, you know how many would we be, how nope. many, you know, every month now we'd be doing another resolution we don't have. This is it right. for us. This is it. Okay. I, okay. okay. It's, a, it's going to be a big project, don't get me wrong, but it's, this is well, it for this, us. Well, this is just to solicit the RFPs on the upper There's going to be other questions. Yeah, correct. Okay. To accept the, the contractor, mm -hmm. the architect, design, and all that stuff. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any further questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. Jay. I don't have that. Jay. I don't have it either. Yeah, that's I didn't make up a resolution? No, okay, I'm sorry. All right, thank you. Uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion that uh, the town board uh, approve cannabis licensing and advisory board called CLAB, C L A B. Have a second for that motion, please? Second. Thank you. Uh, so this committee has really been kind of formed already. Uh, we met initially, but not officially, uh, is re in response to that Seneca Falls has opted in to the sale of cannabis and the distribution. And this committee will be working on things to uh, keep it as regulated as we possibly can on a local level, like distances from schools, uh, no smoking cannabis or using cannabis in public areas like Town Hall or People's Park or the Visitor Center or the Community Center, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's a well-representative group of people that will be working on this, including Chief Pinstra, uh, Caitlin, myself, uh, members of uh, the Downtown Business Association. I have reached out to the Cuban Nation to have a representative on this committee and they've agreed uh, they will be sending somebody and our first meeting is Thursday night at 5.30 at the community center and uh, we're going to get started on trying to come up with some uh, basic uh, guidelines. Okay. Uh, so I'm just officially getting your permission. Okay. All in favor please say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. Resolution here to reappoint a solid waste management committee, uh, whereas there's been some changes in the membership of the committee, whereas Frank Center Propies was appointed by the town supervisor to act as chairman, whereas proposed members of the committee are as follows. Barb Reese expires in 2026, Virginia Kant's term expiring in 2025, Jean Girlway expiring in 2024, uh, Kirsten Schimmel expires in 2023, and Dan Babbitt, ex officio member. Can uh, re, excuse me. Now, therefore, we resolve that Seneca Falls Town by Town Board hereby appoints the above citizens of Seneca Falls as members of the Solid Waste Management Committee with terms as specified. I have a motion for that, please. I'll make a motion. Second. Second. 
Any questions for Frank? The next meeting will be uh, June 14th. It's a Tuesday at the rec center at 4 p.m. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. Uh, a related uh, umbrella resolution Solid Waste Management Committee request to fund mailing of postcards, whereas the town of Senate calls is encouraging organic composting, whereas the household waste program has had very, 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 very slow start. Uh, whereas the Solid Waste Management Committee is requesting that the town board authorize the mailing of postcards to all residents of Seneca Falls, explaining the program, uh, whereas the cost of the mailing of the postcard about is $1,700. Uh, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Seneca Falls Town Board authorize the mailing of the postcard at a cost of $1,700, funds to be taken from the contingency count A1990400 and transferred to the natural upcycling account SR 816.405. Have a motion for that, please. I'll make, I'll make a motion. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you. Thank Any you. questions for Frank? Barb Reese has been uh, working on the postcard, and I believe she actually has it done. Then we will send it electronically to uh, the printer, and they will take care of mailing it out and the whole nine yards. And we'll just be mailing it to households, <coughs> individual households on the tax roll. You know, we're not going to use the election roll where there could be two, three, four, five people in a household that could vote. You know, we'll just do it to an address, one card per address. So uh, the 1700 should be adequate. And, and we, we need to get the, uh, the word out about the organic composting because uh, Mr. Peterman, our highway superintendent, has been keeping very good records about uh, how many people have been going there and uh, doing the organic composting, and it really isn't very good. We, we don't even get 10 people a month using the thing, so hopefully, you know, this will spur it on, and then, uh, you know, uh, maybe we will try to do something on social media you know, maybe Barb or one of the other people on the committee can put something on Facebook. Or, you know, we try to get more advertisement. I, I think when we started, we didn't really uh, advertise it as well as we could have. We had it on the town website, but, you know, I don't know. I, if I, I, I will raise your hand if you were on the town website this today. Hey, pretty good. One, two, three, four. Four out of 25. So that, that's the problem. <laughs> okay. Oh, six, five, sorry. Great. <laughs> but, we'll get, we'll get, but that's it. Are the meetings for Waste Management Committee going to be advertised uh, on the postcards? Oh, well, it's not always the same Tuesday, uh, Dan. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, uh, it's at the convenience of the people that are on the committee. You, you know how we just pick a, a Tuesday, whichever one for us the best. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no, that probably wouldn't be on the, on the postcards because it wouldn't be the same. It's not the same Tuesday every month. Not like the board means the first Tuesday of every month. So, I mean, if you think we ought to pick a Tuesday to make it the same, we can talk about it at the 19th meeting. We're telling them to go on the website. No, so. Come on website. Sure. What time? What are the hours for the compost site? I can put it on the water bills. Uh, it would. You have to talk, whenever, whenever we're open on the weekends, okay, it's like <coughs> 9, <coughs> 9, 9 to 1 or something. 8 to 1 45. Uh, this was a, you know, a difficult, uh, aggressive uh, idea about separating our organics uh, at, at this level. Uh, so, you know, we have, we have to be patient. Uh, I think for the, for the whole program to be effective, is when we make a commitment to provide containers to individuals, households, and some type of collection service, okay? And hopefully, Rhonda is working on some grants available, and hopefully we can make that happen. And I think if that does happen, I think we'll see a lot more participation. Uh, at our 
restaurants downtown, participation is great, okay? Uh, a lot of organic waste is being collected at those sites. Uh, but I think for the next level, that's what's gotta happen. Downtown is successful because there's strategically placed containers. So it's all you gotta do is come out your back door, if I uh, Parker's and I throw it in there, and then somebody's picking up. It's a lot easier to participate when that's happening. Okay. So, I mean, what are we really expecting from this $1,700 unbudgeted spend? I mean, well, well I, I'm hoping that uh, you know we could go from maybe 10 to 50 or 80 or something or 100, you know, people participating a month. Instead. I mean, is there any opportunity to use our our phone blast system, code red, to get the maybe to get just to get the information? out there that the information is on our website and then prominently put this information say on the front of the web so you don't have to go trying to find it that's just uh that's another avenue that, that, that wouldn't cost us anything right. utilizing the system that we already have personally i think a lot of this is just going to get tossed in the it's going to get recycled hopefully hopefully <laughs> Uh, well, the that was going to be my question, Frank. Too, it, 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 has the committee discussed other other things to do other than? No, they really, really haven't. I mean, you could also print out possibly some flyers, some nice-looking flyers that perhaps would catch your eye, and leave them in at some locations downtown, mm -hmm. or if you could grab them, say downtown LA, <coughs> Parkers. Well, we were going to do some flyers at that event that was canceled to close off State Street from the railroad track to Falls. Yes, yeah, yeah. But uh, we were prepared to do some flyers. Yeah, Canal Fest. Yeah. But that event didn't go. Yeah, Canal Fest. Yeah. And, 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 last year, and last year, every farmer's market, we were there handing out material. Yeah. And, and uh, bags, too, yeah. little gr green bags that you could, you know, put your yeah. groceries in that you bought. So, but the, yeah, I, I just, I don't believe that this is going to be very effective. I think those others are more effective than this, and it sounds like they're kind of falling flat. And I agree with the supervisor that when you get the curbside pickup, then people are, are going to start, start doing it. Yeah, I, I, the curbside pickup's a long way away, right? Uh, you get a grant, you're there. Oh, yeah, we get the grant. I'll and even if people have to, I think people would be willing in Geneva. There's people that pay a nominal fee to have curbside pickup, and that, that's that's running in Geneva today. I think there's what twenty dollars a month. Or so yeah, there's people that would do that. Well, it's up to the board. I'm just, you know, I I brought the request back from the uh, committee, and uh, you know, it only uh, it only takes three votes to pass. <laughs> Kyle? Um, we'd be more than happy, as you know or may not know, a lot of your residents on that side of town use your Jimmy's facility, use their town facility. Most of, a lot of them come our way. So I'll be at the next meeting and we'd be happy to A, put that information on our website because frankly we get a lot of those calls of what do I do with this, what do I do with this, what do I do with this. So. We'd be more than happy to put that information on our website as well, if the board so pleases, as well as potentially talk about uh, making our citizen drop area, which a lot of your citizens utilize for other debris, uh, another avenue to start this separation process until curbside comes to try to make this program successful, if that's what the board wants to do. Thank you. Any further discussion or questions? Frank, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to vote yes, but I 100% agree with Steve. Well, we can, uh, we can table it, and, and I can go back to the committee with other options. I can talk to Steve, can send, we can email back and forth, <coughs> ideas. I'll bring them to the committee before the 19th, or you can come to the committee meeting. Well, like I say, canal questions. Yeah. You got an there. And, uh, the uh, farmers market kicks off the 21st. And, all right. I'm going to make a ta motion table table this resolution. Okay. 
I need a second for that. I'll second. Thank you. Um, under further discussion, Frank, I'm 100% I'm supportive of all this, okay? Actually, I'm the one who initiated it. So I would just, at your June meeting, I would just ask them to think about, uh, and they probably have, okay? So this is a delay, but they probably had a thinking of more, and I, the, the $1,700 is not that big of a deal. I just don't think it's the most efficient way to do things, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, so let's brainstorm in June and see if we can, you know, come up with some other alternatives type of thing, all right? And then we'll come back in July and we'll move forward one way or another. Yeah. All right. Fine. All in favor of? Can I just say, I like the idea of a postcard, especially if you're going to spell out what can be taken there on that postcard. And it's simple to stick that up on your refrigerator or whatever. A flyer is too big. It's going to get shuffled into a bunch of other stuff and lost. But just okay. spell it out. Okay. okay. Uh, all in favor of tabling this motion until July, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. So it's tabled. Supervisor and Frank, I just want to clarify, it's the 14th, not the 19th. Is that Tuesday? For anybody who's going to sign it's the 14th, correct? No, the 19th. The 19th. All right, here it is. Yes. I can't understand what you said with the mask. I'm sorry. I just wanted to clarify, it's the 14th, not the 19th. The 14th is that Tuesday. So I just wanted to make sure. Oh, I'm getting the wrong date. You said the 19th. Oh, let me look at the phone. Hold on. <laughs> 14th, yeah, 14th. The 19th is a Sunday. That's Father's Day. Mm -hmm. So I'll the meeting's on the 14th. I'll, maybe I'll get it again. Okay. <laughs> what time? The 14th, yes. At 4 o'clock, right, Frank? 4 o'clock. Community yes. Center. Community Center. Thanks, Marina. Thanks. All right, uh, the next couple of resolutions uh, relate to uh, Rhonda, ironically enough, and uh, writing uh, grants type of thing. Uh, this is, these are necessary uh, for us to move forward in the grant writing process. Uh, so first of all, resolution of support and authorization for the Town of Seneca Falls 2022 New York State Consolidated Funding Application Local Waterfront Revitalization Program. I'm sorry? You skipped that. I skipped something? Yeah, yes. Local signed. law signage. Local law signage. 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 Local law. 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 Local uh, with the agenda is the proposed local law. This, that's a resolution to introduce it and schedule it. Thank you, sir. Uh, so forget everything else I said prior to that. Resolution introducing, you know, you can go out of place, you can go out of order once in a while, right? Sure. Yeah. Right. Just try to get it. Not out. Just go back. Resolution introducing proposed local law and providing for public hearing section 300-54 signs. Whereas the town board of the South of Seneca Falls believes it would be advantageous to the town to amend the town code as it relates to signs. Now, therefore, be it resolved that proposed local law number four of the year 2020 entitled the local law to amending section 300-54 of the Seneca Falls Town Court B and the same is hereby introduced before the town board of Seneca Falls. Be it further resolved that copies of the aforesaid proposed law be laid upon the desk of each member of the town board. Be it further resolved that the aforesaid proposed local law be referred to in the Seneca County and Seneca Falls Planning Boards. Be it further resolved that the town board will hold a public hearing on said proposed law at 6 o'clock on July 5th. Be it further resolved that the town clerk publish your cause to be published and notice of said public hearing in the official newspaper of the town at least 10 days prior upon adoption of the foraging provision the clerk distribute copies of the aforesaid local law to each member of the town board. Can I have a motion for that, please? Can I make a motion? And then second? Thank you. Uh, discussion. Uh, this is a, out of the work of our planning zoning committee that meets every month. Uh, this is uh, an attempt to try to fix a problem. We're not gonna solve the problem, we're trying to fix it and make it less 
uh, of a problem. Uh, this will help with some of the uh, vulgar signs that one might see driving down Fall Street uh, or down Barrett Street. Uh, based on the Supreme Court, we don't have the authority to take away people's First Amendment rights, okay? Uh, so if somebody wants to put the word F after some name and put a poster on their front porch, there's not a whole lot the Supreme Court says you can do about it. What this local law will do, though, is restrict the size of the sign and the number of the signs, okay? Which you'll see. Uh, in fact, as I said, fix the problem 100%. But this has been something the committee's been working on for the last three months, and uh, we're ready to go into action in July. So if, if we're going to schedule a public hearing, shouldn't this board have a copy of that proposed? I thought you did. No, we don't have anything in our packet. We never got it. So I, I, what was said at the committee meeting? Um, I got an email of copy of an email coming to the town from okay. from Sean from this afternoon. This afternoon. Yeah. I propose that we uh, take table this. I will I will hand it from Well I was while you're in executive session. When is the county well or planning board meeting? Tomorrow for that. Right. And and they so their planning board for June is in two days. And this board's gonna meet again before they meet right. in July. Right. So it's not going to have county planning board review until July. It's until July anyway. Right. So it's not, it, it certainly wouldn't hurt, you know, if you wanted to sit on it a month. Um, even the version that I received this afternoon is going to be amended, you know, before this public hearing, whatever it is. So, so if you, if you want to, on it, it's not going to change anything because I don't with, think with would, regrets, okay? I don't with think regrets, we'll be able to act on it at the July meeting anyway. So, we're going to have to do something to schedule it for August so that we can get it up to the county on time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because if we do this in July, it's going to be too late for the county again. Um, we need the second Thursday, I, yeah. On the right, but in July we're here on the fifth, and the second Thursday is the fourteenth. So if we did it on the fifth, we could get it to them and on the Friday. Get it to them if they will take it. Well, they have, don't they have want it by the Wednesday. For the following day, the the Wednesday prior to prior to the meeting. A week. Week before. Yeah. Okay. So if we do it on the fifth, that should be fine. Is okay. Yeah, but everybody's got to do. Everybody's got to do what they're supposed to be doing to make it happen. Okay. But the county planning board, just let me know. Just have it after the July fifth meeting. Make sure it gets in the hands of the county. I will talk to Harriet. Tell her it's coming. Okay. I don't want to delay this any further. All right. So make sure everybody does what they're supposed to be doing. We get it on time. Yes. All right. We have a motion to table this until July. Can I have a second for that? A second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 I should have stayed with my other resolution. <laughs> uh, resolution of support authorizing for the Town of Seneca Falls 2022 New York State Consolidated Funding Application Local Waterfront uh, Plan Preparation. Whereas the Town of Seneca Falls County, Seneca County supports the submission of a 2022 CFA funding on behalf of the town for the local waterfront revitalization program uh, for the preparation of a plan to create a set of focus strategies for the areas uh, along the canal area. So, so moved. Move. So moved. So move. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Rhonda, uh, briefly, this is just uh, trying to secure funding for the planning part. Correct. If we secure the funding, then we would bring the stakeholders in and start talking about ideas, concepts about the canal revitalization. Obviously, the National Women's Hall of Fame would be involved in that. Businesses would be involved in that, both on the south and north side of the canal. Uh, the waterway, water, Ludovico Trail, all of that stuff, uh, those stakeholders would be brought in. This is just for the 
planning, secure funds for the planning process. Correct, and then once this is awarded and you go through that planning process, then there's a part two to this funding stream of implementation. So that type of work needs to be done first for this amount of funding. So who made the motion, can I have? Uh, Steve, Steve. Steve. And seconded by? Right. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. All right, you're going to have to do that and then get it to yeah. Rhonda. Okay. Uh, related, uh, we have a, a seeker resolution type two action where the town of Seneca Falls uh, town board here and after referred to as the town board is completing an application through New York State consolidated funding application. Uh, under New York State Department of Pre Preparation of a Local Waterfront Revitalization Plan. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the town board does hereby classify the above reference action to be a type two action under 6 New York CRR section 67. Thank, Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you. This, again, is just a formality that we have to do to write it. Who, who moved again? I'm sorry. Steve. 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 Okay, uh, any further questions? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Thank you. And that. In our final resolution, resolution of support and authorization for the town of Seneca Falls, authorizing the submittal of a New York State Community Development Block Grant for Microenterprise Assistance. So moved. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> just a couple of things here. Again, we're looking to secure some funds. Uh, the Seneca Falls Development Corporation uh, over the last few months have been talking. Uh, we're trying to brainstorm. Uh, with the Michael Enterprise, the goal would be to fill as many Fall Street storefronts as we possibly can. Uh, unfortunately, probably over 50% of the storefronts are unoccupied. And with the Michael Enterprise grant, uh, funds would be available for people, uh, hopefully to start up their business type of thing, uh, and continue to try to revitalize uh, the storefronts as much as possible. Okay, so that's the purpose of this, uh, to see where we can get and go from there. Okay, any further questions or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. Steve made that motion. Mm -hmm. And seconded by. Uh, negative zero. Okay. Okay, you ready? Hang on one second. Okay, we're missing one here. We have the NPS planning grant. I didn't know if that was just going to be missed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is CBG grant. Yeah. Where is that one? We just approved it. We just approved it. We just did it. We need to go the block grant. The block grant. Yeah. Yeah. This one. This one was just in there. Nope, this, is, this was all together with the other ones. I wouldn't lie to you. Okay, uh, Town of Seneca Falls resolution of support and authorization for the Town of Seneca Falls 2022 New York State Consolidated Funding Application Non Agriculture Non Point Source Planning Grant Application. Uh, Steve, you, you don't have this, right? What does this What does this do if this? Uh, this one would be fine to wait till next month. It will be. And then, would you like me to send it to the members? Uh, no, I'll forward no. it to them. Okay. Okay. Uh, because I don't want to do this because Steve, when you hear this, you're not going to be in favor of it. Okay? <laughs> no, no, it, it, it relates to trying to secure funding for the Barry Street Pollard. Okay. 
So to do due diligence, the Bear Street culture that you know we've gone down this road before. That you're not going to be in favor of probably securing trying to secure funds to fix it. I don't know why you're putting words in my mouth. I don't even really understand what you're talking about. Well, back last year when we were trying to apply for a Bridge New York grant, yeah. the board voted no. Oh, this is the one to, to, to connect the, the pond Correct. to the canal. Correct. The one the canal should be paying for. Correct. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm not going to support that. That's what I, that's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we will, uh, we will uh, put that on that one. Okay, uh, I just, uh, before we go into uh, executive session, uh, I want to thank uh, the many volunteers, uh, just many of them from the Rotary Club, uh, Fred, especially Fred Capozzi, uh, Bob McKevney, uh for their work, Dave Swenson, for their work on maintaining the flowers at Katie Staten Park uh, off of Fall Street. I'd uh, also like to thank Brad Jones, who is uh, been volunteering his time to maintain the area around the statue, our new statue of the Four Ladies. Uh, he's been mowing the lawn and uh, making sure the place is picked up and so forth. So I'd like to thank those people publicly for all Susan, their volunteering. I think Susan Suen has had her hands in those crowns a little thank bit. Thank you very much. I, she was on my list and I'm 100% glad. Right. Uh, Susan Suen, who does every year and uh, spends a lot of uh, her own funds sometimes for a lot of this stuff. So thank you. Uh, thank you to all those volunteers. Every time you do something like that, you always forget. Supervisor Tesla yeah, is very involved in that as well. Also correct. Ted Novak, Fred Capozzi, Bob Academy, 100% right. Like Don't put my name down. <laughs> I did get the water down there. Thanks, Joe. All right, uh, with that, uh, Mr. Senator Kropi. Yeah. I make a motion that the board go into executive session to discuss the employment history of a particular town personnel under Public Officers Law Section 105F. And I am inviting the attorney, Krista Cook, of law firm Bob Shenick and King, to join the executive session. Then we're going to while we're in executive session, we'll be talking about litigation. So I move that the board go into executive session to, ex to discuss current litigation, uh, the Article 78 proceeding of Seneca Meadows versus the town of Seneca Falls. I'm inviting in the attorney, David Howe Esquire of the law firm Boylan Code to join us in the executive session. And I'd also like to add that uh, to, to the invite list would be uh, town, attorney to the town, Patrick Morales, oh. please. Okay. Uh, I'll second that motion. All in favor to enter into executive session, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. Uh, folks, you're more than welcome to stay. Uh, we'll be coming back out, but that's your call. And uh, Krista, she's out there. And David, I'm going to do Krista because she's going to be the quickest, and then we'll come to you, okay? So I'll call you when we're ready to move. Thank you. Krista, come on in. Okay. Okay. Chief Churchill to come out of executive session. And second yeah. by John. Second by John. Okay. Okay. okay, is there any other uh, new business in front of this board? Um, we have some water and sewer credits to approve. I make a motion that we approve water and sewer credits. Second. Okay. Let's any questions or discussion? I don't know. Do we have any? We don't have any. Water oh, oh, there's there's any. That's I right. guess I'm not going to make a motion because we don't have any. No, no, I'll make a motion not. we pay the bills. I second, I second that, that one. one. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. We'll All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right, I guess we're done.